see how this starts to go. I believe we are live on Facebook um, on at least the Palm Beach tech page. Let me make sure everything is working there as well. Okay. Yeah, so we are live currently on Palm Beach Tech, Code Palm Beach, the STEM Studio, and the South Florida Science Center's Facebook page. Um, and we are also recording. Uh, so my name is Joe Russo. For everybody who is uh, following along, uh, I'm the CEO of the Palm Beach Tech Association. Um, we're going to take it slow here for just a couple minutes to make sure everyone can um, get in and uh, start to follow along. Um, but uh, we're really happy and excited to bring you um, some great folks who are leaders in the uh, STEM field in Palm Beach County to talk a little bit about um, STEM education from home for parents and students now uh, that we're in this uh, everybody stay at home time. Um, so obviously with that, you know, the school district has uh, pivoted uh, very effectively, I would say, uh, to a stay at home curriculum. Uh, so we're really excited to have Jay from the school district here. And then um, I don't think any student has ever gone through the school district um, without going to the science center at one point in their uh, childhood. And we're really excited to have uh, Kate Ariza from the science center here. And then uh, David Cabrera, who is one of our, uh, our key volunteers for the Code Palm Beach organization, which teaches coding uh, to children throughout Palm Beach County. And he's also a software architect at PGA. So um, I'd like to start with some introductions uh, um, from you guys. Again, we'll, we'll take it a little slow here, take a few minutes, just to make sure people start going in. But Jay, if you want to go and introduce yourself, and then we'll go along the line from there. Sure. <clears throat> so, Joe, thank you for putting this panel together. Uh, from a school district pers perspective, it, it takes thought leaders um, in a variety of business and industries, and certainly you and Palm Beach Tech and the, the other folks on this call uh, are part of that. My name is Jay Bogus, and I am the Assistant Superintendent for Choice and Innovation for the School District of Palm Beach County. Um, yes, I'm talking to you as a school district leader, but I'm also talking to you as a community constituent and a other of five. Um, I've got an 11, 8, 4, 2, and 4-month-old. So um, when we talk about the struggle being real, it's real here in the Bogus household, but we're getting through it. Um, with a fifth grader and second grader, I know what this distance learning is, is really becoming and what it's all about. But um, I'll pause there as we continue to talk about turning our classrooms uh, from a brick and mortar into our family rooms here at the house. Uh, Kate. Hi, Joe. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is a great place for um, us to get all the resources that we've been working on. My name is Kate Aritza. I am the president and CEO of the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium. And um, yes, hopefully most of your students have been to the Science Center at some point and you will be coming back when we open our doors back up. We're really, really excited. Um, so much like Jay just said, I also ha I have a kindergartner and a second grader. So the struggle is real in our house as well. And obviously everyone at the Science Center is working from home. So we were very, um, we were creative in the content that we developed and we made sure it's not like, we're not adding to the workload. Everything that we've created at the Science Center supplements um, the work that people are doing in Google Classroom and really parallels and enhances it. And, and it's just some fun stuff um, that I'm really excited to, to show everyone. So thanks again for having me, Joe. Oh, thank you for being here. And uh, we'll go to David Cabrera. Awesome. Thanks, man. Hey, everyone. 
Uh, so I'm David Cabrera, like Joe said, I'm a software engineer at PGA of America. I work on their events technology team where I uh, build and maintain the software that helps enable golf championships, like at all levels. I uh, have a fifth grader and a second grader um, in, in Jupiter. So yeah, struggle is, is pretty good. I think we're crushing it here at home. So all good. And David is also um, a volunteer for Code Palm Beach, um, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit as well. Uh, but I'll go uh, quickly over what our uh, goals um, of today are, because uh, we really thought well out, okay, what do we want people to take from this uh, presentation, either if you're uh, live with us today or you're looking at us um, at, at the video uh, later after we posted it online. Uh, so number one, familiarize attendees with the free online resources available. Um, I, I give a lot of credit to uh, local STEM organizations really around the world, and the Science Center is really top notch with that, in, in my opinion as well, from focusing on, okay, well, what can we do to get information out to the students that we would otherwise be in, uh, seeing in person? So we're going to hit a lot on that. And we're also going to provide a little bit of expertise, and uh, myself and David um, will probably hit on this most of all, of what the tech industry can also kind of provide as lessons learned. So tools like this, Zoom, uh, was something that we've been using for, for years, but now it seems like everyone knows this and it's a household name. And of course, educate parents and teachers on local STEM organizations. So we're talking with Kate today, um, and she's going to be talking about some of the other um, organizations they've also partnered with. Uh, and just to, again, hit on uh, who we have with us today, um, you know, these are folks I've personally known for, uh, I think, five or six years um, in my career um, working with tech companies and working with um, STEM organizations throughout the county. Uh, each one of these um, folks has done a lot and dedicated them, themselves, their lives, their careers towards um, being uh, there for their community. And everyone, with the exception of myself, I, I should add, is great um, here. So, you know, there's a lot of perspective that we're uh, so I'm going to hit on briefly uh, what our organization does and then uh, need of the presentation today to really be on um, the STEM uh, organizations and the STEM topics. But the Palm Beach Tech Association, which I'm the CEO of, is a nonprofit that focuses on building the Palm Beaches into a tech hub. And in the long run, STEM is a really, really important part of that. So we work with companies like FPNL. Uh, Office Depot and other Fortune 500 companies on down to startups that really want to build their companies. And in the long term, that starts with education. And yes, elementary education on up because we don't build a tech community without uh, people who want to become engineers. You know, I still remember the first time I went to the Science Center and, you know, got to touch that little ball with the electricity that, you know, makes your hair go up sometimes. But those are really important things that, you know, those experiences really lend into building a, a great culture of innovation in the community. So that's where we come from in wanting to talk about this. But some of our members also have uh, parents and students in the school system, as you probably see some names on here like PGA, Modernizing Medicine, Nextera Energy. So some really great companies that are all part of our local community and also want the STEM community to really thrive through this time. So that's where we come from and wanting to put together this panel and talk a little bit about everything today. But with that, I want to shift um, back over to Jay uh, to talk a little bit about um, the school district and what uh, his team and what the organization as a whole is doing. Thanks so much, Joe. Um, as, as we really have embraced distance learning, um, there's been five key priorities for our school district through this process. And I want to hit on all five and make sure that I kind of dial into them because it's, it's much greater than just what are we learning today? That, that is our focus, yes. But there's a lot greater good that I think the school district of Palm Beach County, Dr. Fenoy and our school board are wanting to achieve during this time. The first of these is meeting the basic needs of students. Um, we as educators go back to Maslow's hierarchy. You know, some of our students, their most consistent meal coming to their, their bellies is through us as a, as a school district provider. So we wanted to make sure our community knows that there's 35 distribution sites for, for food Monday, Wednesday, and Friday throughout our communities. 
that that has been a steadfast priority for our school district and will continue to be through COVID-19. As we also look at basic needs for our students and learners, that we're looking at social emotional health, that we have our mental health counselors in place, that 11 different agencies are working with the school district to make sure that um, uh, telemedicine is taking place. During this time of stress, that we have this as part of an ongoing process well beyond the classroom rigor that we would normally see during our, during our school day. Second aspect is equity and access. Um, for those that have lived in Palm Beach County, um, or if you're just new, th this is a very unique place, north to south, east to west. I mean, goodness gracious, we're bigger than some states in this union. And the disparity between wealth and poverty um, at times can feel like a chasm. The school district has been very strategic on identifying needs, identifying resources, and ultimately identifying partnerships. Um, in looking at identifying partnerships, we've really leaned on this community um, and a, a band together approach has been taken, led by Education Foundation and reaching nearly um, Office Depot, Comcast, FPL, uh, over $100,000 in a two week period to, to provide even greater resource and access to this distance learning approach that our school district is providing. Upskilling our employees, like any business entity right now, we're looking at 23,000 employees looking to be upskilled. Um, that's not just your teacher, that is everyone from a guidance counselor to your data processor, budget analysts, um, our, our administrative assistants, our principals are needing to learn and lead and engage in different ways. And ultimately we're looking for innovative approaches to how we're providing public education to Palm Beach County. We all know and are feeling the revision of milestones. Um, if you haven't seen, but the, the, the governor has released that we will be in distance learning mode to close out this school year. That was uh, addressed yesterday in a press conference by Governor DeSantis. And what we're looking at as a school district and educational leaders, what does that mean for, for our learners? Um, what's the impact that they're facing um, from prom to the spring play, the concert, uh, the fifth grade patrol trip, uh, baseball season? The biggest one I think that's on most people's minds, at least for a graduating senior, is what does graduation look like for this year? Public education is rich with tradition and ritual. Graduation is part of that. And we're moving to a virtual graduation. Um, details are being ironed out as we speak, but our high school principals are well aware and are gearing up for what that's going to look like. Last piece, um, we're cognizant of the stress within our homes. This new work family dynamic. Um, if you haven't figured out where I'm sitting right now, I'm in a, a, a little camper that, that our family has and it's posted up in the front yard because with five kids at home, the reality is I can't just sit in my house and work 10 hours a day like I'm used to. So this is a, a new stress that's, that's a, upon our learners and upon our families and we're cognizant of it. One of the lines that I heard the other day that I think we as a, a school district are approaching is, love over lessons, that this is the time as a world that we need to show kindness, uh, grace, uh, empathy to others. And that's beyond the classroom, but wanted to make sure that this community knew that um, th those are our priorities and really a, a focus from our superintendent, Dr. Donald Fenoy, and a school board that is behind Palm Beach County 100%. As we move into the next slide, um, what has been our response since March 31st uh, from a Palm Beach County perspective? We've, we've delivered nearly 64,000 devices um, to our stakeholders and, and learners throughout Palm Beach County. We've turned on Google Classroom. Um, it was on before, but if you take a look at this slide, a nearly 200,000% increase in Google Classrooms over the course of the last three going into four weeks. Our training resources are both vendor and teacher provided. Um, so it's not going to look the same in every classroom, 
but some foundational aspects center around Reading Plus and Brain Pop and iReady. Things that were already within our brick and mortar sites have just be, been turned virtually. Here's an incredible data point that I wanted to make sure that I shared with you all. On the first day of distance learning that took place in the school district, 86% of our students were logged into their district portal and were accessing online resources with another 125,000 students accessing some aspect of Google Classroom. I gotta tell you that that's an amazing statistic that I think if you would have given us two years to put together a virtual online continuum like, like we're doing now, we would have taken every second of every moment to get there. We, we virtually turned this, no pun intended, turned this around and made this pivot in, in a little over two weeks. So incredibly proud of the leadership from our principals and our teachers and what's taking place. This last resource on this slide is centered around distance learning and we've created a dashboard to find out what's going on at your school, the connectivity that's taking place, what, what resources are being the, the most engaged and what was, uh, or what's a Google Classroom look like at um, Alamanda Elementary or Watson B. Duncan Middle School or uh, Santa Lucia's High School. So that's a great resource for um, Palm Beach County constituents and stakeholders to take a look at. Last slide um, is more about the division of, of which I'm in leadership of, and that's the division of choice and innovation. Choice and innovation is a, is a unique one because under my leadership, we have um, all choice programs, which are over 320 plus world renowned and acclaimed choice and career and technical academies. We have virtual school. Um, we have homeschool. We have adult education, serving nearly 35,000 adult learners throughout the course of a year. We have charter schools, 51 charter schools. Este head, director, as, as we look at this division, the piece that I want to make sure that I is around career and technical education. Um, it, it, it's not quite as easy to, to flip and pivot a auto tech career academy as it is maybe your English class. Or if you're looking at uh, digital design, what do these aspects look like? And ultimately, how are we providing distance learning around that? Um, our team around career and tech ed is led by Dr. Gerilyn Johnson, who and her team have done a fantastic job creating teacher website uh, for our school district and our teachers. Everything is loaded and launched on there. Um, there's some aspects that I wanna make sure I highlight around Adobe and Microsoft. Um, if, if your student was issued a Chromebook and you're in one of these career academies that you have access uh, virtually to the cloud via Adobe and Microsoft to continue your learning, to continue working in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, um, that you have access to Excel and PowerPoint. These resources are coupled um, that you don't have to have them directly on the device, that we're, we're using a cloud-based software and that's ultimately how we're getting Office 365 and other aspects. Dr. Johnson and her team have been purposeful around hosting ongoing Minecraft EDU live webinars in conjunction with Microsoft and Fidgetal Labs. The biggest piece that I wanna make sure that we continue to go back to is that we're preparing the next generation for college and career readiness. The tangible that comes with career tech is an industry certification. And although, you know, um, right now we're working on Department of Education, what that could look like with testing at home, right now it's the process that we're working towards, the skill sets that the students continue to attain and ultimately lead us to a brighter future. Um, I'll close with kind of, I heard Ron, Ron Emanuel say that um, you never let a serious crisis go to waste. And a, as a young leader in public ed, um, I've got another 30 years of what public education is to become. And I see this distance learning becoming a coupled part of how we're making a greater impact to as many stakeholders as possible. And I see 
COVID-19 and this corona apocalypse as part of that and wanted to make sure that you heard the good news about what the school district of Palm Beach County is providing and ultimately where we're taking this well into 2020, 2021 and beyond. Thank you for having me, Joe. All right, thank you very much, Jay. Um, and those, obviously, for seeing Jay for the, the first time, I mean, uh, he's definitely uh, busted his butt over the years to work for students in the school district. I mean, he's now the assistant superintendent of choice and innovation. But, um, you know, it, it, it's been really awesome to see you put in a lot of really great work for, for our community over the years. Um, that said, I want to go to um, Kate Ariza. She's the CEO of the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium and one of my favorite places in Palm Beach County. Thanks, Joe. All right, so I'm going to go through what our, we now have, obviously our doors are closed at the Science Center, but our mission has never been stronger. So I am going into our virtual science programs. So we do Facebook Live science demos. Can you hear me, Joe? Yeah, you're, you're good. Okay. My kids are in the background. So Facebook Live science demos Fridays at 3 p.m. We do aquarium programs. We do virtual science shorts. We're doing story time. So we, we have our early childhood programming. We're doing virtual exhibit tours. So we're taking people through our brain exhibit. We're taking people through our science trail in the back. We're giving everyone the experience of um, being at the Science Center, but obviously you, you can go through all of these things at home. So our science demos are, are really fun. We have our science educators. You can see a picture of them right there. That is um, Bunsen, Bernie, and Hydrogen Harry, and they are the nitromaniacs. And they take you through, whether it's chemical reactions or electricity or ice cream or any types of fun things, those are our, um, our Facebook Live science demos on Friday afternoons. And it's a, it's a really fun way to kind of close out the weekend. And what I, what I mentioned before is that we are, all of the um, demos and all of the classes that we've created, they parallel what the kids are learning in school. So you'll see in, in one of the next slides that we have things divided up by grade levels and, and we're, we're putting everything, we're getting everything into Google Classroom to, to supplement. Oh, hold on, go back, Joe, sorry to supplement and not make it harder um, what, what the kids are really learning in school. Okay, so this is something that's really fun that we're really excited about. We are doing a virtual science fair and actually, and the school district is helping us with this. Uh, these are two week sessions. So we're doing four two week sessions of science fair projects. So we are giving you the challenges, okay? And these are challenges that uh, you can do with things that you have in your house. We're fully aware you cannot go out and buy these things um, and, you know, like you would a normal science fair project. So all of these design challenges are things that you have around your house and that they're really fun to do. But again, instill the concepts that all of the kids are still learning through their Google Classroom. So today actually just started because it's the 20th, right? So today we started our backyard science lab and that's the topic for these next two weeks. You'll turn it in on May 1st. And then we have a panel of judges that um, grades these on a rubric and, and the grading scale. But the really cool thing is that these are videos, right? So we are going to actually, the winners, which is um, first, second, and third, we're going to put the videos online and we're really gonna showcase what all of the talented students are doing for this virtual science fair. It's open for grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, it's free. If you would like to make a donation, obviously our doors are closed, so uh, we are fully uh, would love donations, but it's absolutely free. We don't want this to be exclusive at all. This is inclusive to anyone. And again, these are things that you can find around the house. So it's, um, it's, it's a really fun way to get the kids involved in, in a science fair. All right, you wanna go to the next slide, Joe? So this is a really fun, all of this, uh, these slides that Joe's um, uh, showing right now, these are all on our website. Um, so this is our stay at home science. So what we've done is we've divided kindergarten through eighth grade. And we have, if you click on these on our website, it has, so seed bombs, it has um, a PDF and telling how to do all of these experiments. What, what are the concepts that it instills? 
Um, they're, they're little uh, experiments that you can do at home. And they're really obviously for kindergartners all the way up through uh, eighth grade, a Rube Goldberg machine. So, um, and this lays everything out. You don't have to go searching. You don't have to look, um, you know, for cool things. I've seen a lot of, a lot of on the mom sites that I'm on, people are saying, what are, what are some experiments? What can I do with my kids? Well, here is, um, that's probably 30 experiments right there that all you do is click on one of those and you'll be able to, um, to see how you do that. And what, um, what are kind of the concepts that it instills in that as well? I don't know, was that, was that the last one, Joe? Okay, so this is very cool. We're doing, uh, we're doing virtual marine science classes. So we are working with um, the Reef Institute and the American Shark Conservancy. And um, we're teaming up to, to bring you these virtual classes that really instill the marine biology concept. Obviously, we have um, marine biologists that still go into the Science Center every day. We have over 200 animals and fish at the Science Center. So our marine biologists are still going in every day. So what we decided to do was team up with these two other phenomenal organizations. And we teach lessons on coral, on shark conservation, on the, the waterways around us anything kind of um, marine biology themed. And we do that daily at 10 a.m. And all of this stuff is streamed live on our, um, our Facebook page. And this one's on the Reef Institute backslash education. Um, the Reef Institute's a really cool organization that does coral conservation. So we've been working with them for a while. So, we have at the Science Center, we've done a STEM collaborative, obviously virtually, working with Loggerhead at Marine Life Institute. Some of the other collaborators are Mox Planck and Scripps. I mean, local leading science organizations, not just locally, but I mean, Scripps and Mox Planck, they're international. So we have all teamed together. And what we've done is we all promote everyone's uh, kind of materials and their classes. And on this um, online, on our website, this virtual STEM collaborative, you can see a list of all the offerings that people have. And I mean, it's you know from the sculpture gardens to um, really uh, organizations that are doing STEAM, STEM and STEAM collaboratives as well. So, and Loggerhead's kind of been um, leading this fight here. Yeah, and uh, to that point too, I mean, um... There, there's also, uh, I believe, Manatee Lagoon, um, the Palm Beach Zoo. There's a few other organizations out there that are, are really big on their Facebook Live. Um, but I, I think nobody really beats the, the two mad scientists you have working over there, Kate. Yeah, they, uh, the Nitromaniacs are pretty great. And in, in addition to those, they're, the science demos that they do, we have something, they also do science shorts. So the demos are about 20 to 30 minutes long, but our science shorts are um, smaller. There are do-it-yourself um, kind of experiments again. So for example, they did we did liquid nitrogen ice cream. Well, most people don't have liquid nitrogen at their house. So we give substitutes and how you can do some of these fun things at home. So there's two different versions. The science demos are a little bit longer and maybe use something like the Van der Graaff generator, Joe, which what, what you mentioned earlier. Um, and then the science shorts for if you want something smaller, a little bit more impactful. And then at any time you can go and see the virtual tours of the exhibits. Awesome. And that, I think that's all. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Kate. Um, we're gonna go now to uh, one of the coolest dads I know, David Cabrera, who um, also in his uh, free time is volunteer with uh, Code Palm Beach. It's an organization that was uh, co-founded by two local uh, technology leaders, uh, George Whitaker and Sean Bogansky, who are also dads uh, and built purely out of the intent for parents to teach their kids how to code. So David, take it away. Cool. Thanks, Joe. So uh, yeah, as Joe said, I've been, I've been volunteering with Code Palm Beach for a few years now. So it's just uh, super cool to be speaking on behalf of them. So Code Palm Beach is a 501c3 nonprofit um, that introduced students to computer coding technology in the Palm Beaches. Uh, the organization's mission is to provide a launch pad to success in computer programming for students ages 6 to 14. Uh, both my kids attend this. I teach it like whenever I can. All the instructors are like volunteers like myself. They come from a lot of different successful tech companies in the Palm Beaches. We have, you know, totally entry level devs all the way up through experienced CTOs. And uh, you can learn more about Code Palm, Code Palm Beach at codepalmbeach.org. If you go there, there's like a resources page where you can go that's going to link you out to a couple of the tools that we're going to touch on here today. 
Awesome. So the first tool up, this is a uh, student typer. So typer, it's actually an open source product built and built and maintained primarily by one of Code Palm Beach's own, uh, Jeremy Lawson, also with a couple of other con contributors from the community. So uh, typer is like a great tool um, to kind of get students comfortable with typing on a keyboard. A lot of times when you're programming, you use some of those funny punctuation marks that, you know, they're like prevalent programming languages, but, you know, most students just haven't been exposed to them. Um, so this tool is great because it lets uh, students start by just getting comfortable with the keyboard, typing out different stories, and then switching to even starting doing like uh, basic HTML stuff. And um, there's some challenges, which are pretty cool. And you can reach all this at, uh, that one's at typer.codepalmbeach.org. But when we do the on-site events, we always start out with students using this tool for like a good 15 minutes. It's like an awesome warm up. Next slide, please, sir. Awesome, so this one's my daughter's favorite. So uh, Free Code Camp, it's, uh, again, it's a free site. All these tools are free. Um, this one's in the name. Uh, this has a lot of great lessons. Um, for beginners, it's best to start off with like basic HTML and basic CSS. My daughter's done those two and now she's working on JavaScript, which is a lot of fun because like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, those are like the main tools you use as a front-end web developer, which I do a lot of. So it's like super rewarding to see my daughter using the same tools and using the same languages I use on a daily basis. Um, this one's, uh, you don't have to have an account to use it. Uh, definitely recommend you, uh, your student create one though. It's totally free and it keeps track of their progress. So whenever they get back to it, they can pick up where they left off rather than having to start over every time. Cool, so code.org. You guys, I mean, you're all probably familiar with this one. I know my, my kids both use this at school. Um, it's fun. This is my son's favorite. So uh, he's in second grade. It's it's great because this one works like a video game, except in order to like control your character, you're not just like moving around. You actually have to drag these kind of control blocks over. So you're using these kind of you're learning like core uh, coding concepts like uh, control structures like iteration and uh, conditional statements. You're learning how to do different things, and it's all drag and drop. So the kid, you know, the student drags it over, says you know do this until this happens, and they're really just trying to accomplish a goal on each page. This one is kind of, I think, a favorite for our on-site events. I think by the end of any of our hour-long coding sessions, half the laptops are showing this dance party app, which is like a kind of a programming challenge where you get to have like some music playing and they're kind of, they're, they're telling their character, their programming how to do different dance moves and when to change to different moves. So half, half the class is doing this one normally at the end. It's awesome. All right, this, uh, this is our last one here. Um, this one's a little bit more advanced. My daughter loves this one because she's getting into the JavaScript thing. So this one is basically just a big multiplayer game and you have to program your character to do different things, to fight different characters. And you know they've really done a great job at gamifying uh, code education. Um, the two biggest languages on here, Python and JavaScript. Um, I definitely recommend JavaScript as a JS dev. So just throwing that out there, but there's a lot of other languages you can use too. So this one's awesome fun for kids and adults. So I totally recommend this one. Yeah. And each one of these that we've gone over, we've done in person for uh, a couple of years now. Um, and it, I, I think starting with the first and then kind of, you know, going through, I mean, different ages, different groups of um, students might take to one more than others. Um, but it, it, they're all really great. Um, and um, just shout out again to Jeremy who built out that first tool uh, from scratch the uh, the student typer. Um, he, he's the the vice president of um, Code Palm Beach, and just through his own time, as uh, as volunteer dad time, he he built out a, a an educational tool, which is pretty awesome. So um, with that, um, we uh, wanted to take some time for um, some questions and answers. Um, we've been um, getting a few different um, ones on um, on Facebook, and uh, we obviously have some people here um, with us today on Zoom. So uh, I'll ask if anyone has questions, feel free to one, put them in the chat if you're on the Zoom with us, or two, if you're on Facebook, just comment your question and we'll be able to pull that in. And Tony uh, is going to be, you know, getting those to me. So um, as we start to have the conversation here with everybody, you know, we'll um, start picking up questions. Uh, and there's uh, quite a few people watching us 
um, online right now. So you know, we'll we'll look forward to that. But um, I'll pose the first question to everybody, and just wanted to get your perspective uh, as parents. For one, you know, we're hearing obviously about what you're doing with your organizations and with work, but um, how have you adapted as parents to this? And you know, how are you keeping your 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 children on task with uh, with learning through this new time that we're in? Well, I'll, I'll start with uh, my perspective. I, I have a kindergartner and a second grader, both in, in public schools. And um, the teachers have been really, really phenomenal. I was very anxious, very nervous. Um, how is my kindergartner going to be able to make this uh, transition? And I spoke to his teacher on the first day and she kind of reaffirmed, hey, we're all in this together. We understand the home environment is very different from the school environment. And just her and my, my daughter's actually second grade teacher kind of reiterated that fact to me when I, when I had the discussion with her. So knowing that they really understand that it's kind of sometimes mass chaos at home and um, we might not be able to get all those lessons in or finish everything to a T or what, whatever, knowing that you know, from the school district's perspective, they understood that as a parent that really helped ease my mind and it's it's made everything much easier, a much better transition. Kate, thank you so much for saying that. That That is, as we let off, that, that has been a priority. Um, I, I use the words love and grace as part of this. And, and, and in looking at it, um, it's one of those pieces that as we continue to see unemployment rise, um, folks living paycheck to paycheck and not having it come in, we have to be cognizant of that as educational leaders. Um, that, that assignment not, might not make the, the two o'clock deadline. Uh, and in looking at it, um, if you can't make the, the morning meeting at 8 a.m. because mom and dad or aunt uncle have to make it to work, um, if, they're, if they're going to work even in these days, what that looks like. So I appreciate you saying it. Uh, speaking from my home, um, Friday wasn't a good day, but today has been. Um, and I think that that's kind of the feeling we as parents have, you know, it's a minute to minute by scenario. Um, when you put, the, you know, when you stuff us all in one place and you close down beaches and you don't have parks to go to, uh, stress levels rise. We know that. But I, I do think the learning aspects and the engagement I've seen throughout our district is bar none, is some of the best I've seen um, and really excited to share that. So thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on that too. Um, we've definitely had some growing pains here, but our kids' teachers have both been rock stars. So I, don't know, I, I think it's, uh, it's going pretty well. So one of the questions uh, we just got on Facebook was um, for older um, uh, kids, those in middle school and high school who um, might be a little bit more stir crazy with everything going on right now, what's um, thoughts or resources that might be out there uh, for them? Um, you know, I, I'm assuming grades uh, eight to 12 um, is really where the question is based. Well, from, from the Science Center, our lessons right now go up to eighth grade, and we are working on the curriculum for the high school, but um, ours are, go up to eighth grade. And again, um, it's, it's stuff that you can find at home that you can do at home. So we, we make it really straightforward, being, again, fully aware of um, the pressure that everyone is under right now. Um, so we, we're working on that, the older uh, high school material right now. For, uh, for coding, I can uh, definitely say, I know Free Code Camp has uh, more accelerated stuff. If they're older kids looking to go to programming, um, that's a great tool. Also, Code Combat, if they're into games, as I mean, I don't know, my kid's 10, but they're super into games anyways. Um, those are great tools to learn a new skill while, you know, playing and having fun. I would respond by, uh, I know that we have Tony Ashey, who is one of our IT specialists, um, who's also on this call, uh, and Dr. Jerilyn Johnson, who's the Director of Choice and Career and Tech Ed. Um, if they would like to weigh into this, I, I would be more than happy to, to have you to, to hop in this conversation to provide what these resources look like. So, yes, for a high school student, 
Um, I would say, you know, um, be patient with your students. Um, our high schoolers are getting um, uh, lots of information, uh, lots of assignments uh, from teachers, but we have provided for our teachers uh, a ton of resources uh, that are available. And uh, we are still working through our teachers to educate our students on uh, industry recognized um, content and hopefully uh, be able to allow them to uh, test as soon as possible um, with some of the testing that they've been able to do within the schools. We're still working on some of that, but um, our high school students, I would just say, you know, be patient with your, your children um, because this is a lot. And um, uh, sometimes they may get frustrated, as Jay said, you know, for high schoolers as well, they wanna get out, they want to um, be at the beach, they wanna do some other things and, um, you know, just be patient with them. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. And, uh, you know, on that point too, um, you know, just to throw in my, again, non-expertise input here, I, I think a lot of um, parents and a lot of students probably looking for games. And one of the things that we've talked about was the gamification aspect of some of these STEM tools. Um, you know, things like Minecraft, which is a video game, is incredibly educational. Uh, my roommate, here is actually playing Minecraft a really massive amount of time. And it's um, really incredible to see how this, again, 20 something um, is actually finding the same joy uh, in the game as somebody in elementary school would. So it might even be something that you as a parent could um, take into play. But I remember when I was a high school student getting into, you know, strategy games um, and, you know, finding different things that were educational was an easy way to um, leverage my parents into saying, hey, yeah, we can get you this because it's educational, as opposed to just get another game. So, you know, that's something that I, I found a lot of the tools around um, coding have really tried to leverage uh, because gamification as a, as a principle really goes into uh, students wanting to achieve that, that next layer, level and that next step. Um, so that's been pretty neat for, for us to see through, um, through Code Palm Beach. Uh, and I did see uh, Tony posted a little bit more about um, Minecraft uh, in there in the chat. Um, so uh, another uh, question, and again, if anybody has one, feel free to type it in the chat here, uh, really gets down to, um, you know, wh where do you guys see, um, you know, a lot of the, um, a, a lot of the interactions that are, are you know, typically uh, happening in person kind of transitioning to because obviously we're, we're not going to be in school here for a few more months and we're not going to be in person for a few more months but how do you have these in-person interactions that are really important with STEM um, in the next few months and an example being you know going to Loggerhead Marine Life and seeing the turtles or going to uh, the Science Center and touching the different exhibits there that really kind of show you the tangible side of, of, of that. Um, and in coding, you know, going and seeing, you know, David, for example, you know, coding right there in front of you, where do you guys see some of the, um, some of the ways that we could work in getting past that as, as parents or as, um, in my case, an uncle uh, to, you know, try and fill in some of the gaps there? What we've been doing at the Science Center is that every um, lesson that we have, science demo, we give a worksheet in advance. So we post the worksheet in advance so that you can actually be going along and reading the questions and like you can um, you can match it to what the science educator is saying. And then we make sure to to make it as interactive as we can. So they get a question on Facebook. Um, you know, the, the educator is going to answer it within the next 30 seconds. So we've really been um, cognizant of just that. You, they're not at the Science Center seeing all our, our cool exhibits. So let's make sure we have at least the interaction online. And it's been pretty successful. People actually really like the worksheets. So um, we, did, we, we didn't start with the worksheets and then we kind of figured that out that, hey, let's post this work, these in advance. And it really makes um, the lesson that much more impactful. So that's one of the things that we kind of did through trial and error. Jay, do you guys have anything uh, on, on that? 
Yeah, so I, I, I'll give you a personal example. Uh, my, my son was, was asked to, to build out um, his community, um, the, the neighborhood in which we live, and for him to walk down three blocks, um, walk east another two blocks, and then walk uh, north two more blocks. And in doing so, um, I'm kind of giving this example as, as part of what it looks like to, to, to take science and then have application to it. Um, another part, of, we, we live up in North County. Um, it was a, kind of an extra assignment or ancillary, but um, to go look at the Jupiter Lighthouse. And then um, that, that park's not open, but you can go in the parking lot. And uh, the teacher had kind of figured out some scientific math aspects of it and, and related a math problem to it. Point that I'm getting at, I think our teachers are being incredibly creative knowing that there's actual time outside of the classroom that our kids not only have now, but they don't know what to do with. And so we're trying to get them outside of, you know, the, the confines of their home um, and, and not necessarily off of a device, but using it in a different way, that there's a research aspect that's taking place. And then in doing so, um, to, to walk the, the neighborhood street uh, the way that my son was asked to, and then ultimately to come back, graph it out, and then uh, submit it as, a, as an assignment. Um, I, I, I only give you that because we did that on uh, Thursday of last week, and it gave us a reason and excuse to take a walk in a neighborhood that Maybe sometimes in, in times past, we were just too busy to do so, Joe. And, and one thing I, I, I think I've, I've found, um, my sister actually brought this up to me. She's uh, the mother to a uh, five-year-old and a, and a two-year-old, um, both really cute, adorable kids, my dad. Uh, and she took them out to uh, a farm the other day. Uh, to get them out of the house to buy some produce and some flowers. And that gave me the idea to start doing that uh, myself. Um, but also, you know, learning about, you know, hey, this is where food comes from. Uh, and, you know, this is where we buy food and actually like showing the source as opposed to like just going to the supermarket. So even like little things like that, I I found kind of valuable. Um, for me, I'm obviously you know, cooking something that I've just gotten right from the farm, but for a five-year-old, it's a lot different picture than, you know, just going to, um, going to the farm or excuse me, going to the supermarket. Um, I did get a question, um, on, um, on this and actually Tony, maybe if you can, um, answer that question in the chat about Minecraft. Um, but I did get, um, Another question about a, a, a game from uh, Claudia Kirk Barto, who's the CEO of Junior Achievement. So hi, Claudia. Thank you for thank you for watching. About um, uh, games like um, Fortnite and you know whether those are, are are good to play. I I think she might have been posing that to me. I I think a lot of kids are playing a lot of games. Fortnite is one of them because it's just free. But um, you know that I, I wouldn't call that a strategy game so much. <laughs> But, um, you know, there, there are other ones like that uh, out there. You know, Minecraft, I think, is probably the, the most prevalent free game um, that you could probably get um, and that there's a lot of strategy into. I mean, for me, it's always thought provoking, it, 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 you know, how thought provoking is something. Um, Tony, did you want to hit on Minecraft at all? Uh, yeah, if I could chime in for just one second. This is uh, Tony Ashy from the Career and Tech Ed Department of the School District. Um, one of the reasons why we were, were spotlighting Minecraft for EDU is because it's, it's, it's not the exact same as the, the, the regular Minecraft game. It was set up by Microsoft as a, a teaching and learning tool. So that's the difference between your Minecraft and uh, your Minecraft for EDU. They've actually rebranded it as Minecraft Education Edition. Um, but inside of that Minecraft game, um, there are lessons uh, self-paced. There are also options where teachers can go in and create uh, collaborative learning opportunities for students. And it goes across all subject areas, especially for the elementary school students. I know one of the questions that we saw um, in, on the Facebook chat was questions specifically about middle school and high school. And uh, the Minecraft for EDU uh, environment has a, a lot of opportunities for students to use, um, you know, different uh, coding languages such as Python, 
to create um, items within the game in real time, either with their teacher or uh, as an assignment from their teacher. So that's why we kind of spotlighted the Minecraft um, environment. It's, it's not just a game. Awesome. And with that, we're, we're almost at time. Um, so I, I did want to, um, you know, ask our panelists if they have any um, last thoughts to, to throw out there. Um, and of course, you know, thank them so much for all the work that they're putting in. I mean, we're obviously taking some time now to talk to everybody in the middle of the day, but, you know, everyone's working really hard to um, be there for uh, the students of Palm Beach County. So uh, with that, I'm curious if anyone has any closing thoughts. Well, thanks, Joe. I'll say from, from the Science Center, thank you for letting us kind of showcase everything that we have going on. Um, it seems like we are busier now than when our doors were actually open, um, you're translating and coming up with all this virtual content. And I'll just say, we are continuing to create. This is, this is, um, this is something that we will continue to, to let out more, more uh, programs like kitchen chemistry, things, uh, meals that you can cook and all the chemistry about it is one of the things we're working on right now. So um, all of that will be posted obviously on our website and Facebook. And um, we hope to see everyone back at the Science Center when we reopen. I have a couple of quick tips. Um, I asked my kids if they can give me any tips to tell other parents on uh, this webinar and uh, they both had something. So super quick. My son who's in second grade is always asking us how to like, spell stuff. He discovered he can ask our Alexa or smart home assistant how to spell things. So that is saving me and my wife a lot of time and sanity. And also my daughter says that if you're doing um, assignments you would normally have to print for a Google Classroom, her teacher recommended they use this Google plugin, a Chrome plugin called uh, Kami, I believe, K-A-M-I. And it's awesome because she gets to like write all her stuff right on the screen and then she has a button to like submit to Google Classroom. So it's got this great integration. So those are awesome tools my kids love and they said you guys would love them too. Joe, on behalf of the superintendent and our school board, just thank you for your continued leadership within this, this industry of technology. The other partners from South Florida Science Museum and Palm Beach Code and so on. Um, thank you all for what you're doing for, for our kids. As we continue to lead the, the 10th largest school district in the nation and nearly 200,000 students, um, the, 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 the true mantra is it takes a village. And I think Palm Beach County has not only stepped up, but uh, is prepared to, to continue to lead the way that we have and to continue to serve uh, the stakeholders um, that need us more now than ever before. So thank you to this panel and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, and thank you all to you guys. I mean, uh, you all have the hardest jobs in the world right now. And I don't mean that as professionals, I mean that as parents. Um, and, uh, you, you know, I, I find it, you know, incredibly, uh, encouraging that there are people uh, like you guys out there in the world that are just doing good things and, you know, being able to juggle everything as hard of a, a job as it is right now. Um, it, it is really um, meaningful to me to know that there are people like you in, in our community. So I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for doing what you do and for just being great people. Um, for those who are, are watching, we're going to post this out. There's been a lot of um, different links that have been talked about. So when we um, do update the um, Facebook live stream, so if you're watching on Facebook, um, you'll be able to see all of the uh, different resources we talked about. We'll make sure to post those out there. Um, so please do visit back, check in, and we'll make sure to get you all, all the information. But thank you all for joining us. Thank you again to our panelists, and I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye.